Yeah, I loan El Cash about a hundred thousand dollars. That day we was due to have a little chat. The kid I hit a paycheck payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks! You got lucky, you know. Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she had done, everything would have been over. What? Well, he's trying to blame it on her. Now I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elk was $50,000. Yeah, well, you just got the VIG into a, take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice as principal. And they were payment then was December 3rd, the day of in incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, he ain't got no case. His motive? Hmm. He has to have one, but what is it? We're gonna figure that out. I'm gonna save the game because this is looking bad for me. Hold it! Did he have any way of paying the loan back? The fool was a gambler. He said he couldn't give it up until he landed a big win. So I agreed to help him. Big win? Help him? You? I kept hitting him with ideas for ways he could have get a big win. But the guy kept losing. So you were helping him for his sake? Or yours? Winning through compromise. You help me, I help you. What's the difference, huh? I don't believe this. Nick, would anyone really ever loan money to someone they thought was unreliable? Like, for example, if it were, if were you, I only loan you five bucks, Max. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Maya. <laughs> you just saved me five bucks. So how much you were expecting to pay you back on that day? What you think? The whole package, $100,000 including interest. That's a real heavyweight punch. Once a client misses repayment, you call the whole loan in. You want to make it in my world? That's all you gotta do. And how many times had Mr. Elwig that been late to his repayments? Once. And how much was he supposed to pay back every month? 50 bucks. Sounds like Mr. Elwig was in a real sticky spot. Yeah, $50 a month. He never paid that huge loan, huge loan off. How much did he have left in his debt? You just want to round about figures? About a hundred thousand bucks. That's about a whole amount. Talking about a guy who had 58 cents in his wallet. Nunny, you telling me he wasn't even gonna pay for the coffee? He certainly seems to have been a brave man, this Elwig. That guy was real smooth, I tell you. Real smooth. You'll have your money in less than five minutes, that's what he says to me. The guy then calls me the tender tiger and they was skating on thin ice with me. Was that because he... The tight guy won the lottery was his last chance big win. And you can confirm that this is the ticket in question. That's it. Millionaire radio show starts at 1.30 p.m. and runs for 10 minutes. That fixes the time. You two met with some accuracy. And the whole scene was acted out 30 minutes later. All that so Mr. Kudo would see it. I could see the kid's face now. I ain't gonna never forget it. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at that time? I don't remember. If there was no one there, I'll wear that ridiculous tiger shirt for a month. So Armstrong, Maggie, if I'm right, and Viola Cavarini, they were all there at the same time. So the victim had intended to repay you from his lottery winnings from the beginning? Seems that way to me. But you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Huh. The unlying belief is that you would next roll with the worst ever losing streak you ever had. That's what defines a true gambler. 
it sounds so cool. Don't be tempted, Nick. You haven't got the willpower for it. All I know is the kid got took the shot and got lucky in the end. If that waitress hadn't done what she did, everything would have been over. The waitress, you mean? That girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair, who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over and done with. I should push a little push. Ask about what Maggie did. What exactly are you implying the defendant did? How would you go ask for as in about that half a million dollar ticket? She wanted it so bad, she poisoned Elwig's coffee. A likely theory, your word hasn't held water lately, Mr. t -Ray. Let's not forget this witness was actually at the scene, Trite. Law don't exactly agree with some of the details, deals I send down there. But I couldn't be- I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. I see. Your Honor. The witness's last few statements are worth a good two cups of coffee. I concur, Mr. Goodell. You will amend your testimony accordingly, witness. Haha. <laughs> so that's what you was after, Mr. Phoenix, right? Thanks to what she did, my business with that kid was over. The tiger's trying to pin the crime on Maggie. If I ask him about what he saw, it's only gonna damage our case. What do you mean things would have been over for and done with? Are you so there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my 100,000 bucks back, that's all. I'm a business bet and I was all coming together before that weight just got in the way. Hmm, as far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tier had no motive for killing the victim. Well, Mr. Wright, are you happy with the testimony or would you like to amend it? Better leave it at that to try to figure out something out. Thank you, Your Honor, but there's no need to amend the testimony. Very well. Continue with your cross examination then. So the tiger was meeting with Glenn Elk to get his money back. If Mr. Elk had just given him the lottery ticket, that would have been the end of it. Yeah, so that's what the tiger's- so what's the tiger's motive? It's the big one. If I don't- and, and it's to underline his testimony, it's all over for us. Why would he have poison- have to poison Mr. Elwig? Why did he loan him the money in the first place? And when did he repay him? Can we amend the testimony? Can I get anyone to test me as it stands? Your Honor, the defense would like the testimony amended. Very well. Witness who amend your testimony reflect your recent statements, please. And why did you take the lottery tick when you left? Objection! Objection! Okay. I think we have to amend something else. Okay, it has to be this, but the problem is, what is the evidence? It has to be this or the other one. Okay. I'm gonna try to, like, save this and see if I'm right. If I'm wrong, then oof. MC Bomber. Because it was worth millions of dollars. Objection! Fuck. The evidence for you to contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are the evidence statement are all related? They aren't, aren't they? <sighs> Fucking A. I'm gonna try again. Okay, could it be the million dollar loan? Objection! Fuck! Okay, that's definitely wrong. Oh my god, what is it? Figure out the motive. The motive, though. Oh 
a hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. Should I put out this? Nope. It has to be something on that. What is it though? Fucking, I'm getting lost right now. Fucking A. This is bad. It has to be one of these things, no? <sighs> Maybe I have to amend the testimony. Yeah, I think I have to amend- maybe it's- maybe because I amended the wrong testimony. He didn't have any other reason to kill the guy. Okay, we're gonna try this again. If I'm wrong, then I can restart. Oh, I am right! Hell yeah! So you just intended to get the $100,000 from Mr. Elwig OU, correct? I loaned the guy the cash, that's my right. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Elwig, I don't believe the hundred thousand dollars is what you were really after. Objection. What are you getting at, Mr. Trite? What else would a money lender be after other than money? Oh, money lender was after the money. A well, money in a totally different league. The money that would single ditch what that a single disc like this would fetch. MC Bomber. What is that? A computer virus, your honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer is a program that wrecks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? <laughs> Are you stupid, judge? <laughs> I guess the beard on is, is the only part from his art of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, your honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus that, like MC Bomber, would be worth several million dollars on the black market. Several million dollars? Lending money with no hope would ever seeing repayment would be normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glenelg had no way to repay the money is crucial. Nani? Glenelg was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elwig put up in order to borrow the money. Objection! You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get a hold of that program? Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he is no minds an idiot, Mr. Trite. Men like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Well, of course he could, provided he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tyrion need money to tune up one million dollars? Because... ...of the medical papers. There we go. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How much of this do you know? This medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. And yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum? Someone should sue these HMOs. Huh, no one pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. t had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. 
Garg. He did it for her, man. But did he have to resort to murder? Order, order, order! You say his life depended on Mr. Wright. Indeed it did, simply because the injury woman has none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you just say Cadaverini? Bruto Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city, and... Doting grandfather to his precious Viola, Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. Whoa. Your life was in danger unless you paid in compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire one million dollars, Bruto Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Dylan Elg's life to pay your debt! On the day of the murder, the Mr. T-Ray's sole intention was to get his hands on the CD. Glen Elk had no way of paying back the $100,000 and Mr. T-Ray knew it. But, then a miracle happened. The kid behind the Mr. T-Ray would prefer to say never happened, but he can't. And neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly, at the 11th hour, Mr. Elwig won a half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. T-Ray with no way of getting his hands on an all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So he did it. So he resorted to illegitimate means. That's crazy. But why? He murdered Glenn Elk and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bride for the, for the crime. With great legs. Mr. Terry poses Glenn Elk. While Viola Cadaverini were here to road Mrs. Bride. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. Witness being the one we heard her testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Troy, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept in the dark about it. Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. T Ray's plan. Got him by the hook line sinker, baby. Order, order, silence, I will clear the. <laughs> you just put on a good show, Spikey. Huh? If you want to stay in live in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone? If I did something like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't nothing dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. Y you do? Why are you making that face? Despite your appearance, you're very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bright had no way out. What? Nani, another one, Mr. Wright. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Mr. Trite? What was the trick you say to your perform to frame the accused? The magazine clipping. Yeah, it's this one. The case. Oh, he's drinking more coffee? And what's the relevance of that, Mr. Trite? Um, it's a, just a little intro. Intro into what? It seems all this has been an elaborate trick on the part of the defense. What? That's wrong. What do you mean it's wrong? No, wait. So you play your trick, a huge trick. Fuck, what is it? Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Mr. Trite? Uh... Oh! Don't tell me the paper badge! Don't tell me it's a fucking paper... What on earth is that? What an insult to think this could be fooled by such a childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, your honor. Mr. T-Ray. 
You didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. On month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. How the fuck did he get his face right, though? How the fuck did he get his face? His face was fucking brown, no? How the fuck did you even... Yeah, how did, how did you even change... Did you wear, like, some fucking makeup or something? Nani, that's... that's... The truth. But... The witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? Yep, he, now he recognizes him. No doubt it was you standing in here this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disreputable shabby defense I have ever seen. Urgh. Ah! Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused man here was this man. Are you prepared to t stand and testify that it was him? Go? Hmm. Hey. Forget about it, okay? Yeah. What the fuck? Why is he changing his tone? Huh? I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You, you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, right? Objection! No objection! Have you no pride, sir? Objection. This isn't a matter of pride. In this case, you didn't know. Try here in court, we deal with people's lives. Ugh. Mr. Godot was right. Your honor? Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness is standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge has vested power to hand on the verdict. So in my position cannot be swayed by memory without evidence to support it. No, I think it's I think I think it's I think we have Gumshoe, where are you? If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. Circumstances surrounding Mr. Here are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far. You say you impersonated Glenn Elg, and you say he impersonated you? No, none of that adds up to the murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Ugh. Can we- Gumshoe? Heh. <laughs> Gumshoe needs to come! Huh. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger or you're gonna get mauled, you Scott that. All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Huh. Looks like I won't be needing a riff, though. I had just one more piece of evidence. Gumshoe, where are you? One more piece of evidence, and we I can get Maggie off the hook. This witness cross examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. T Ray. <laughs> Fuck! No! Hold it! Gumshoe! Your honor, sir! Yo, Gumshoe! Wait! Detective! Detective Gumshoe! Sorry it took so long, pal. I, I, I sticked everything on this. My bad, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. What is it, detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It is the final decisive piece of evidence. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? Bought the prince, pal, from this medicine bottle. Oh, so do you know who the prince belonged to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So, tell us. They're from the tigers, right? I knew it. <laughs> you bet! Clear as crystal over the bottle. Your fear of tear is paw prince, alright. That's great, we got him now, Nick! What's wrong with you? You hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on this line for this, Nick. I know, but look, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on the bottom now. Ow. Huh? What? Why not? You said you wanted one decisive piece of evidence. What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in the Glen Elg's coffee. He's already admitted that he met with the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle... That really doesn't make any difference now. What? What? What are you saying, Phoenix? I knew it. 
Great, no matter how hard I try, I'll never be of any use. But hey, don't you be so hard on yourself. It's our last chance to help Maggie. I've been working on some useless piece of evidence this whole time. It's alright, I'm really a loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um. Detective Gumshoe? Maggie! You've been working hard on something for me? I'm sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. You're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry, I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe! Wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Can we use it now? Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you can prepare this decisive evidence you discovered. Um, yes? Don't keep us all in suspense, try to show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court. Can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time you's gonna be wasting? I ain't never been to no court before. But you's lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner here, but maybe if I, he thinks I got me beat. He'll let us guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Okay. If this bottle is going to be helping me, then so be it. This is the fence's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's? Your Honor. Naturally, the court isn't already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new info has come to light. We have clearly identified some ink fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tire. Nutty. But well, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw this new info? No one here knows what the bottle contains. Except for one man, one person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. Why is it so loud? My prints are on that pansy looking bottle, is that what you saying? Now what the hell is in it anyway? Phony trial, phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. So t it's a decisive piece of evidence to prove your guilt. Let me save before we get a game over. Why? Because it contains... Potassium Cyanide. This bottle contains potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, your honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. Oh, shit. And on this bottle, Mr. Tear, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? <laughs> you make a good clown, you know that. Nani? You say never gonna get this, this to stick. You just make me laugh now. Do you think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix Wright. They ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna be ripped to shreds. What the fuck is he talking about? The cyanide bottle was brown. It was made of glass. That cheap piece of trash. Don't look nothing like it. Hmm? Huh? What does that mean? Huh? Huh? Got him. At la- Oh! He- He got caught! 
He knows what the potassium cyanide is! In. Nunny. Why has everyone gone quiet? I said that but Oh, he knows where at the bottle- Why do you know the bottle? Is this the bottle you are referring to? Yes, that's it. That's the bottle. It's the cyanide. How do you know that? How do you know it was in a brown bottle? But you ain't gonna find any prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy look at the suit fool you people. That's lawyer just playing games. Tell him, prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out, you fucking idiot. <laughs> wow, this guy already admitted it. He's a fucking idiot. Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What, what the fuck did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. It really had nothing to do with the murder. You shouldn't have known all the little details. For this instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. I... Oh... No... But just now, you just fucking slipped up on purpose in this single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Her? Ah, uh, shit, that's, uh... I did not mean you don't know what you's messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars in the black market. You think I'm gonna let some jump-up suit get the better of me? Sure. The last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with the phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of them all. Oh, what the fuck? That's scary. He's like a fucking devil. Huh. 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 What's going on? It looks like a blackout. Well done, Trite. I saved my 17 cup of coffee just for you. <laughs> huh? Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. Holy shit. Mr. Wright, if you caught a tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, you won't be able to let go. How then are your things going with Mr. T. Ray, Mr. Godot? He is being arrested on suspicion of murder for Glen Elg, your honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a grave error. Mr. Brian was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence, the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He merely got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Purity was a truly frightening criminal. Huh. The truly frightening one is that defense attorney over there. Godot. Now I'm up, now my position to deliver my ver I swear, the potassium cyanide was I'm I'm gonna bluff the I can't believe I had to bluff the guy. Because, like, if I said it was medicine, I would have probably lost the case. So I'm like, hmm. Maybe if we fake it and it was potassium cyanide, we can make him fuck him up. This court finds a defendant, Maggie Bride. Not guilty. Wow! 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 Well, that is all. This court is adjourned. Thank you, Crimson. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. I didn't expect to get a sub from you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm in case number three, and I'm like fucking like trying to finish case number three. But yeah, Mr. Wright, I, I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. 
Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. It was the tiger. Look, Nick, in the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, I guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, we'll try to get Ace Attorney investigations, but I need to wait, unfortunately. Um, anyway. Wait! Detective Gumshoe. Oh, oh, yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. Feels so bad about yelling at him before. The awkward silence, though. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony, then? Huh? Oh, well, I was... Well, I guess I'll be heading off, then. See you around. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Wait up, detective. He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt out for you. Came out an hour later to fucking, like, give us evidence that we really needed. It's thanks to him we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly... That I had to bluff it. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready... Isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Um, Maggie... You know, Detective Gumshoe's really been worried about you, you through all of this. I wanted to believe that, sir. On that first day of the trial, he practically gave me a judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why, and he thought I might have done it. I gotta prove that her Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. Finally, are we finally gonna fucking use it? The lunchbox. Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. That that's a present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost the weight, and he was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe. Hi. I actually really like weenies, you know. You were being sunrayed the last time we gave it to her. <laughs> what is that sound effect? Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um. Is it okay if I eat this now? Yay! <laughs> We've solved the case, baby! Let's go! So how is it, Maggie? It's... It's really good. And so the case of the phony versus genuine comes to an end. How the fuck? The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Man. You know what's so funny? You know what's so fucking funny about this? I hated the fucking two witnesses, Armstrong and Kudo. They were fucking like, fucking me up. Turnabout beginnings, Edgeworth. What the? Fuck. Oh, I can't do it now. So yeah, I'm gonna save up to this point. So thank you guys for watching this episode of Trials and Tribulations. And I guess I'll see you guys all next time once we do case number four.